Okay, here we are, and we're going to take a step back and try to do some stuff with LabVIEW. Now, this is going to be strictly LabVIEW without trying to do anything with the Arduino. <coughs> but right now, what we're going to do is we're going to try to set up a little uh, stopwatch. And what we do is we select new VI. VI is a virtual instrument. And once we create these things, we can use them anywhere. So what we're going to do... And again, there's two panels. There's our front panel, and then there's our block diagram. The front panel is our controls, and the block diagram is the guy who does all the work. And so if we got on our front panel, what we want to do is we want to go in here, and this is the numeric um, pad. And there's a lot of controls in here, and it takes a while to figure out where everything's at. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a numeric indicator up here. And we're going to go back and we're also going to go in the boolean function and grab a stop button so we can stop our function now at this point eh, we wanna just go on here click on numeric and then go to properties and we're going to change it so with the appearance we're going to change to um, elapsed time and we're going to do it in seconds and we're going to be measuring this in one one hundredth of a second. So there we have our meter is okay now and what we're going to do now is we're going to work on some of the um, block diagram. Now you can see that where we put in our time meter and our stop button those are already in there because we put them in there. Now um, for the front panel it has controls then we go to the block diagram it has um, programming is one of the main things we're going to do today and the front panel is separate from um, the block diagram so in programming first thing we're going to do is put in our structures and in the structures this is a while loop and we're going to do everything with a while loop we're just going to drop it in place and there's two icons with the while loop there's this which is how many while loops have we actually done and there's this which is the stop button now that has the same function as our stop but we're going to use the front panel to stop it now for our um, while loop this thing will just run 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 and there's no way to control it so what we have to do we have to go in here and we have to go into the numeric and well we have to go in here and do timing mechanisms and this timing mechanism is the thing that looks like a stopwatch is going to control how long we wait until the loop keeps iterating so what we do is we put in a stopwatch and then we go back here to our numeric pad and down here our numeric constants and we're going to put a couple of these in and you might have to watch this a couple times to figure out what's happening we're going to put one there we're going to put one here and now we're going to make it so it counts in one one hundredths of a second. Now this thing um, counts, and if you want to see what it does, you can just click on it so it gets the highlight around it, and then go down and say help. And this will tell you it counts in milliseconds, and then it has milliseconds to wait. So anyway, this counts in milliseconds. Now if we want to count in hundredths of seconds, we take our millisecond counter, which is one one thousand thousandths of a second and we're going to change this to 10 so at every 10 um, milliseconds it'll send out a pulse to say do the loop again and so what we do is normally when we drag stuff we drag it with our pointer like all programs when we change values we want to use our finger thing so we can go in here and we're going to change that one to 10 so now we're counting in increments of one one hundredths of a second so now this thing will be counting in hundredths of a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, so it'll count to 100 when we have 100 seconds. So we want to put that factor in there. And the important thing is, I think, uh, this number times that number has got to equal 1,000 because we're counting in milliseconds. So what we do here is we take whatever number we have, and we're going to divide it. So we take the number of loops we've done, we divide by 100, and that'll tell us how many seconds. 
Now this is saying we're counting to the resolution of one one hundredth of a second. Now the final step is to wire everything and to wire it we take the spool of wire here which says connect wire. We just grab it and we can highlight on our things it shows it highlighting and we just put it down to where we want to tab it. And we want to go from there we want to go to our counter and we want to take this device and we want to plug it into our stopwatch and everywhere it shows a highlight when you're at the right point and here our stop button is going over to this stop and <clears throat> another thing you can see in here if we have our pointer back these are orange that means it's a, a, f a floating type number the blues here here and here are just integers the green over here is just um, a boolean function. It's either true or false, one or zero. So if we go back to our front panel, and the last thing we have to do is we're back at our pointer, is we probably want to take a look at this output, and we want to make sure what the display format is going to be. And here uh, we have uh, formatting six digits. That's a little much, so we'll go down to four digits. So we got like ten point six three. Um, seconds. And in here we make the precision type, the digits of precision is how precise we're going to be and hopefully, and I'll move this guy out of the way, hopefully we're ready to go. So if we hit our run button it'll start counting and then when we hit our stop button it stops counting so we're at 4.61 seconds. So it is one one hundredth of a second and now there's two ways you can clear it when you hit run again from the stop position it automatically starts running from the zero position so it just starts running again and we can stop it again or one thing if you don't wanna if you wanna not start automatically you can click on this guy and you can go down to the data operations and then just move over here it says reinitialize to default value which is zero so now when we want to run we can press it whenever we want um, to set up things and so that's the oh and so now we're going to file we're going to save this as and what we're going to do is if I find where I want to save it um, Uh, we'll put in my school stuff and I'll, uh, I'll put in a new folder and we'll call it lab view folder. Now what we're going to do is we're going to call it elapsed timer. And now this saves it as a VI, that virtual instrument. And now we can use that anywhere we want in the future for one of our, if we need a stopwatch or anything and we want to time a function, we can use this function. We just bring it in as a function. So that's the finale for this. And the next one we're going to do is we're going to make this lapse timer time out so that it lights an LED after it's been on for about 15 seconds. So that's our little video one.